Hello everyone! Today we are going to be talking about the creepy Balenciaga photo shoot you may have heard of, how I helped accidentally kick off Balenciaga Gate, the bizarre defenses of the photo shoot, and how I lost friends over it. No, I'm not joking. This is going to be a wild one. So get comfy, get cozy, I made you some hot chocolate. Look, it's got marshmallows in it. So for those of you who don't know, because I sure as hell did not before all of this, Balenciaga is a high-end fashion clothing brand that sells ugly shit like this for thousands of dollars. I personally do not buy Balenciaga clothing, I am not a filthy capitalist, I buy my clothes on Amazon, like a good socialist. Anyway, the company is currently under fire for their new holiday collection photo shoot. And when you see these photos, you will probably understand why. One was a little girl on a couch with a very worried, sad look on her face, surrounded by alcohol and holding a teddy bear, a teddy bear that was wearing a full BDSM harness. There was other pictures of the girl laying on the couch, as well as another shot of another sad little girl on the bed, surrounded by Balenciaga items, chains, and a whole ass leash. A little weird, a little sussy. Like the pictures just gave you bad vibes. But anyway, to make things even worse, right on their homepage, right next to that photo shoot, was a photo of a purse on a desk. Seems normal, right? But the only visible paper sticking out from under the purse, the only piece of paper with any text on it, conveniently right there, was a court case related to child Creepy. Coincidentally, two days before this all hit the internet, Balenciaga left Twitter. Not only did they delete their Twitter account, but they deleted every single photo off of their Instagram page. Why are you running? Why are you running? So I actually found all of this out because I saw a TikTok on my Twitter timeline by the streamer Brittany Venti, and she was talking about this. And I couldn't believe it, so I went to Balenciaga's website, and lo and behold, it was real. The creepy photo shoots, the CP document, everything was right there. So I made my own tweet about it, and this tweet winded up absolutely popping off. I had no idea the entire internet started talking about it because once a tweet of mine starts to blow up, I just mute it and just move on with my day. My tweet was all over mainstream media. New York Post even called me a quote, eagle-eyed social media watchdog. Okay. This spiraled completely out of control. People were burning their Balenciaga items. There is just no PR team that is going to get them out of this one. Making rap songs against Balenciaga. Now I burn Balenciaga. They keep coming for our kids, now we need to follow. Design a brand that they have, I know hell is hotter. Even vandalizing Balenciaga stores. Also, just so everyone knows, I am not suicidal. Title. Just in case news comes out that I was found with three designer bullets in the back of my head. And I don't think Brittany Venti is either, so if either of us... <laughs> we do not have information that will lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. The best part about this, though, has to be I was fact-checked by Twitter and this is what they said. Although Shu often makes comments to cause amusement or laughter, this is an authentic Balenciaga marketing photograph. It contains an excerpt from the U.S. Supreme Court opinion in United States v. Williams, which upheld a part of federal federal child pornography law. I've never seen one of these fact checker things just be like, fact check true. <laughs> I know Shu likes to get a little silly, but she's actually serious this time. <laughs> I also love that it just says Shu. Like Twitter and I are just on a first name basis now. Now you're probably asking Shu, why would a high end fashion brand pull this like where's Waldo shit? Well, there are a few theories. The most obvious one is to just look edgy and subversive. Nothing like a good old controversy to get eyes on your brand. So if this was some kind of pathetic attempt at an attention grab, they sure got attention and much more. I wouldn't put it past corpos to do some weird attention whoring like this, and I definitely wouldn't put it past the fashion industry. The other theory is that this is just a little wink, a little nod to the other freaks in the industry. Think the Wilhelm scream, but for like little St. James tourists. Finally, Balenciaga, the brand itself, came out and apologized. 
We sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused. Our plush bear bags should have not been featured with children in this campaign. We have immediately removed the campaign from all platforms. We apologize for displaying unsettling documents in our campaign. We take this matter very seriously and are taking legal action against the parties responsible for creating the set and including unapproved items for our spring campaign photo shoot. We strongly condemn abuse of children in any form. We we stand for children's safety and well-being. With Balenciaga facing a firestorm over a series of disturbing new ads, all eyes and ears were on their highest profile partner for comment. Kim finally released a statement on Sunday calling herself disgusted and outraged. Meanwhile, her ex-husband, Kanye West, after going on Infowars and saying, quote, There are a lot of things I love about Hitler. Ran defense for Balenciaga. And now all of a sudden, Everyone is so outraged and focused on Balenciaga, but then we're still aborting our kids. We're still fornicating, but oh, we don't, we don't wear Balenciaga now. Y you shut the hell up. So fellow paranoid schizophrenics started digging and found more creepy things in the photos from Balenciaga. And this has spiraled into a much bigger conspiracy. This is the thing with conspiracies though, they're always rabbit holes. When there's so many things that are unexplained about the world and people just kind of feel helpless and powerless, people understandably start to look for answers elsewhere. And a lot of people took this Balenciaga thing as just kind of the rich and powerful doing what they do in secret now out in the open. Do I think this is some kind of Pizzagate thing where Balenciaga's like hiding children in their basement? Do I think they are literally trafficking children? I don't think that, I don't know that, I've never claimed to know that. What I do know is that this is a huge fuck up from a billion dollar company. And when a billion dollar company fucks up, who better to come to their defense than the progressive left? Can we stop pretending Shu is an ally yet? Shu on head belongs in a prison cell for hate speech. Shu herself is basically a terrorist enabler at this point. You are a Nazi. Shu is literally just a Nazi. Yeah, um, Shu is a Nazi. Shu on head is a fascist and a danger to our community. This is your daily reminder that Shu on head is a Nazi. I'm sick of Shu on head. She needs to go. No more. I think that if a button to deplatform her existed, we should push it this instant. Do you think reporting her vids would do anything? Hate speech and all? How about we mass? report her Twitter. Fuck Shu. This crosses a line. Shu is a cum dump enabler for fascist violence. Who'd expected anything else from a Nazi bimbo hag? She's fundamentally the enemy and should always be treated as such. People like Shu and Matt Walsh are the types of people I believe committing acts of violence against is morally justified. Now I just need to make this clear that this is in no way a representation of the entire left online. Most of the people who follow me are left wing and they agreed that yeah, this photo shoot was really weird. The people who are mad about this are from a pretty small bubble, but nevertheless, lo and behold, I was apparently canceled. Now I use the term canceled sort of sarcastically because I really wasn't canceled. It's kind of impossible to cancel me in general because I have four different fan bases and they all hate each other and me. And a lot of you guys watching this probably didn't even know all of this happened, but it was just very weird and I need to talk about this. Sean head on her way to once again use her massive platform to provide the neo-Nazis in her audience with fodder they can use to justify the murder of gay people, but this time the day after another anti-gay terror attack. I'm sorry. Where are the gays? My post had absolutely nothing to do with LGBT people. The Balenciaga thing in general had nothing to do with LGBT people. Where did this come from? This guy took a random response to my tweet and implied I was responsible for someone else's opinion and therefore fueling hate crimes against gay people. I'm just confused how Balenciaga posting an ad of kids holding stuffed animals in fetish gear turned into LGBT groomer discourse. Did I miss something? Look at the quote tweets and replies to her tweet thread from her followers. I have half a million followers on Twitter. I have over a million subscribers on YouTube. I am not the re wrangler. There were a few people, not that many, who took my tweet and ran with their own narrative of it. I cannot control the opinions of other people. And a lot of these people aren't even in my audience. They're just random 
people on Twitter who found my tweet because it went viral. That is how a public forum works. If someone is egregiously being homophobic or harassing people in my replies, I'll just block them. There's nothing else I can do. What do you want me to do about the opinions of other people? Why don't you focus on what I said and did? Is it because I said and did? Nothing wrong? I mean this with the most respect possible. Posting this a day after a homophobic terror attack that happened because the trans drag groomer scare comes off in very bad taste. I think choosing to bring this to light right after the shooting is phenomenally poor taste. She went ahead throwing queers under the bus right after a mass shooting to cater to her homophobic audience. There was a mass shooting in a gay club in Colorado a few days before this Balenciaga thing broke. And because there was a shooting at a gay nightclub, I can't talk about pedophilia? What? To shitpost the LGBT community on f***ing Trans Day of Remembrance is so disrespectful, I don't even know what to say. Same vibe as criticizing veterans on Veterans Day. Let me get this straight. Criticizing a fashion brand for baiting on Trans Day of Remembrance is the same as criticizing veterans on Veterans Day? Bro, you don't even need the far right at this point. You're doing their job for them. What the f***? Even if I saw it from their perspective, like even if I removed my brain and replaced it with a little toy monkey with symbols or whatever they have going on up there, even if I saw it from their point of view, if the issue they have with all of this is that I shouldn't be talking about this at a time where gay groomer rhetoric is popular, why aren't they mad at Balenciaga for doing an ad like this at the time the gay groomer thing is popular? Why aren't they directing their anger at the brand. Why are they shooting the messenger? The worst part about this is that this tweet came from a YouTuber who I've been friends with for years. Why is this person who I thought was my friend doing this unhinged stretch Armstrong reach to imply I am responsible for the murder of LGBT people? This isn't how you would treat a friend. This isn't criticism. This isn't a joke. This is disgusting. I just don't understand like if you had a problem why didn't you come to me in private? Why did you have to make it into some public sideshow lit epic dunk for the world to see? Maybe this is karma because I've dropped friends over politics before. Because honestly, I can't find any other explanation for this. But this wasn't even political. Like I couldn't think of an optically worse thing to drop someone over. Like I know you used to be right wing. Personally, I can't relate. But not everything related to pedophilia has to do with gay people. Shu needs to stop with the conspiracy posting. Ah yes, the conspiracy. The conspiracy that the fashion industry is f***ed up and weird. The conspiracy that the powerful elites are abusing children. That conspiracy. The worst part is she pretends to be gay so she can yell homophobe when you call her out. I'm convinced Shu has no real political opinions and just says slash believes whatever sounds good to her. Isn't- isn't that what an opinion is? Begging people to finally realize Shu is literally just right-wing. Shu is a conservative, no matter how many lefties try to say otherwise. There's a term coined by Lindsay Ellis that I think fits Shu. She's a diet Nazi. <laughs> Shu on head is a right-wing propagandist. She is likely paid to be so either directly or indirectly. I f hate Shu. She's not a leftist. She's a fascist who wants health care. Does this look like a fascist to you? She needs to be kicked out of the left like yesterday. She is a fascist. If you are denying it at this point, you are just a simp. Shu on head is a right-wing paid propagandist infiltrating leftist spaces. She is a calculated and insincere plant and she needs to be excommunicated. We need to boot Shu from the left. She isn't a leftist. At this point, we just have to not let Shu exist on the left anymore. <laughs> Inevitably, she is going to leave the left and it will not be surprising. So first of all, if I was going to leave the left over left-wing people being mean to me, I would have left the left like eight f***ing years ago. I know it's hard for these people to understand because their extent of politics is quite literally Discord servers and Reddit communities. You cannot be kicked out of opinions. Like I could call myself a right-winger right now, but I would be the shittiest right-winger ever, probably on account of the whole, I don't know, socialism thing? The whole being a socialist might get in the way. But more importantly, I don't know what about me calling shit like this out makes me not left-wing. It genuinely feels like some massive psyop. Like I want workers' rights and for people to have their basic necessities met. 
I didn't sign up for this weird ass shit. I'm just so tired of like trying to prove to these people that I'm left wing. I'm just tired of being like, no, you don't understand. I voted for Bernie in 2016 and in 2020. I believe this and I believe that. And I I'm tired. I'm too old for this shit. I am exhausted. These people just want me to be some like progressive little shit lib rising from the ashes of like the anti SJW world. They want me on my hands and knees groveling and apologizing for making like stupid level one baby edgy jokes about attack helicopters five years ago. They want me saying we need to destigmatize pedophilia or want me simping for the CIA or whatever the f these people are up to nowadays. And it's like, no, not gonna happen. Sorry. What's so funny is a lot of these content creators do agree with me, but they won't say so in public. Like they DM me and they're like, oh, you're so right. Instead of just doing it publicly because they fear their own audiences. It's literally so sad. It's like an abusive relationship. But I just wanna go back to the more important, less personal aspect of this whole thing. And that is the connection between pedo and LGBT. So of course there are a lot of people on the right wing who are comparing the two. They have been doing this since the 1950s. The pedo smear has been thrown at gay people for decades. There's always been people on the right who will compare all the things I talk about, like the maps and stuff to gay people. Like, but it's very clear from my content if you've watched my content, which I really don't think a lot of these people who are mad at me have done, it's very clear from my content that I've always pushed back on this. But what is new to me is now liberals coming out and saying I can't talk about this stuff and that talking about it is somehow inherently anti-gay. Which when you think about it is really, really bad. Shu has never been a leftist. She's a right-wing reactionary trad wife who has an unhealthy obsession with making false equivalences between LGBTQ people and pedophiles. So first of all, let's be very clear here. I have been doing the opposite of this my entire career. This has been one of my focuses on this channel for years. And do you know what one of the core messages of a lot of those videos were? They are now trying to squeeze themselves into the LGBT community. And do not be mistaken, the LGBT community ain't having that shit. You cannot sit with the LGBT community. You can't sit with us! And for the people who go, must slippery slope, you're fueling the delusions that they did actually successfully break their way into the community. They're latching on a movement that is currently, finally, seeing acceptance, which makes them snakes. There's a literally nothing more dangerous about pedophilia than any other sexual attraction when you think about it. You hear that, guys? There is no difference between an adult consensually having sex with another adult and an adult having sex with a child. Amazing! We learned so much on this channel! But right now, since gays and transgender people have already gotten much of their rights all throughout the world, I think it's time for to have their turn. Ah! <laughs> oh, shut up! Shut up! This right here is what triggers my timbers. Gay consenting adults can do whatever they want with other gay consenting adults. A pedophile's sexuality. Children aren't a gender, so it's not a sexuality, but like I've, like I've said before, cannot go through with their sick fetish without harming anybody. Speaking as a gay man, I believe we should include the P. To do otherwise is to betray the principles that give us our rights. For the last f***ing time. You can't sit with us! My main point in a lot of those videos was you can't sit with us. Nearly a decade of content of me going, this is really bad, the LGBT community isn't defending this, only for a chunk of the left to suddenly go, stop right there, Hitler. Shu never seems to go after right-wing p shit. I wonder why that is. Okay, I only make maybe like, what, five videos a year? It shouldn't be that hard to go onto my page and scroll and just see this video, which is about exactly that. Like, it's right there. You don't even have to scroll. It's just, it's right there. Like, I made my prostasia video about a year ago. Remember my prostasia video where I exposed some child protection organization? What if I posted that video today? Would I be bombarded with these same people and called a Nazi and a reactionary and whatever? Because the only people that were doing that last year was the organization itself. The pedo organization was calling me alt-right for exposing them. That's you. 
That's you right now! It's a pattern from Shu that she had for years. Even though she didn't say gay groomer out loud, it can be seen as a dog whistle. Shu may not have said anything about LGBTQ plus people out loud, but we can hear the dog whistle from miles away. Shu knows exactly what she's doing. 31 year old knows exactly what she's doing. That's the thing, she did not mention gay and trans people. We know that she is thinking it, and so does her audience. It's called a dog whistle. She hides behind technically not saying anything explicit. Stop falling for her dog whistling tactic. Just because she didn't say gay doesn't mean that it's not what she's implying. The sheer amount of people who still don't know that Shu on Head is a dog whistle. Her name is a dog whistle. It always was. It's so funny to me that you can literally breathe and these people will find a way to make it a dog whistle, but a child could be holding a teddy bear in bondage gear in a fashion ad and they call you a crazy conspiracy theorist for pointing it out. And they love to do this gaslighting shit right? They try to make you feel crazy for thinking something like most normal people would think is weird is weird. Literal soup brain. Leather isn't innately related to BDSM. What's wrong with a child seeing BDSM gear? The child does not know it's sexual. What harm comes from this? Who gives a shit, dude? It's a kid holding a teddy bear. How traumatizing. People love to misunderstand fashion. It's so tiring. <laughs> it's not pet. It's fashion, mom. Look it up. Is putting a leather harness on a dog BDSM too? This child is not being mutilated. It is just holding a bear that happens to have a leather strap on it. Petco.com. Oh no, they're selling pedophile wear. I'm sorry, you can't fool a degenerate. That is a BDSM harness. Maybe shoe on head sees a piece of leather next to a child and starts getting a little, you know, riled up. Maybe it's a little bit of projection on shoe on head's part. Oh, you think this looks weird? Well, you must be a pedophile yourself. Wow, got him. This shit went viral on like normie Twitter and Facebook and TikTok. There were like Zoomer girls on TikTok like, oh my God, this shit crazy, for real, for real, this shit not bussin'. And you're over here pretending it's perfectly fine and not weird and only Nazis and pedophiles would have a problem with this. Okay. Just reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. Balenciaga better be paying you people good because if they're not, that's even more pathetic. They should at least throw you like one of those $3,000 high-heeled Crocs or whatever the f Like the brand itself even admitted it was weird, yet you're over here running defense for them for free. Even more annoying than the gaslighting has to be the whataboutism. I see whataboutism all the time when I make content. When I talk about police brutality, what about violence against police officers? When I talk about men being cringe, what about women being cringe? When I talk about women being cringe, what about men being cringe? You can always tell when someone doesn't really have a point or they are low key defending the thing you're talking about when they do this, what about, what about, what about, what about shit. And every time you wanna talk about weirdo shit involving children, there's like 12 mother that crawl out of a rock like notice how they never talk about child beauty contests all this political theater from you yet not one mention of banning child beauty pageants all this outrage but nothing about child beauty pageants hmm oh yeah you're talking about this bad thing what about this other bad thing what is this the all lives matter of pedophilia multiple things can be bad at once but it's not 2005 we're not middle-aged mothers from the South, nobody is out here defending child beauty pageants. This is so weird because Shu has talked about kink and BDSM in her videos before. She's a hypocrite. I could be wearing a full BDSM harness right now. I could be wearing a full gimp suit, but it would not matter because my content is not made for children. I am an adult who makes content for adults. You either have a room temperature IQ or you're coping. Shu is Catholic, but never calls out the of the Catholic Church. Has June ever talked about pedophilia in the church? I can't find her mentioning it. And again, these people don't watch my content. Hell, I even had a joke about it in my prostasia video. It's literally tax exempted. It is a tax exempted pedophile club. So it's a church. Also, hold on. Remember cuties? Remember when cuties came out? Cuties, which much like the Balenciaga thing, had nothing to do with LGBT people. And like a dozen articles came out from liberal journalists about how like everyone criticizing it is alt-right. Cuties, the extraordinary Netflix debut that became the target of a right-wing campaign. The controversy surrounding it seems to be propaganda fueled by
QAnon types and anti-Semites. Audiences hate it because there's a moral panic right-wing campaign targeting it. Wrong. Leftists like Shu on Head and Vosh are critical of the film. Shu on Head is a notorious alt-right asshole. Also, you just tagged two aggressive horrible accounts. Please delete that tweet. You're putting people on the thread at risk. And was Cuties not basically beauty pageant shit? It had nothing to do with gay people. And once again, we were calling it out. And where were you? Calling us f***ing Nazis. It doesn't f***ing matter. It doesn't matter if it's gay or straight. It doesn't matter if it's a giant corporation or a Netflix movie. They will find a way to call me alt-right for talking about this shit. The absolute urgency and ease at which these people jump on the most optically disastrous swords is both horrifying and incredible to me. The term map went from something on Tumblr that I talked about seven years ago to now real hired academics using the term. Um, stigma against maps is a problem in part because it makes maps think that they're monsters. Um, that's really problematic in terms of map well-being. Um, it's really hard to cope when you think you're a terrible person uh, because you have attractions that you can't change. And I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. Most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. Notice the familiar language they're using. They are co-opting progressive language. And I want the community, I want people in general, to get ahead of this. But no, apparently MAP is just a like right-wing psyop, and I'm just a reactionary, and blah 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 blah. I feel like the crazy scientist in the beginning of a disaster movie that nobody believes, and then it's like too late. And what's upsetting to me, as a socialist, what's upsetting to me is the progressive movement, or whatever this is, I don't even know what this is, in the near future is going to wind up at the least ignoring and at the most defending some real disgusting shit in the near future in fear of giving the right ammo. There are right-wing people who are constantly calling everything and anything to do with pedophilia, like gay shit, LGBT shit. Yes, I get it. I have a buy flag in the background of some of my videos and I get comments like, nice groomer flag. Like, I get it. But how long should we not say anything in fear of giving them ammo? Because this was probably the most clear cut example of something weird and gross, completely unrelated to gay people. And these people still did damage control for it. If anything would ever give the right ammo, it's the way you acted so quickly to defend this shit. And yes, by implying I can't talk about it or I'm uh, committing scholastic terrorism or whatever the f the new buzzword is, that is defending this. This shit that anyone with eyes can see is creepy. I have been talking about this stuff all of my career. And I have a great track record. I was talking about maps years ago, and now there's hired academics using the term. I warned about Amos Yee, who said I was too mean to pedophiles, and he was arrested for having CP. I exposed Prostasia, then they shut down their forum so young maps could no longer enter it. I helped get the word out about this Balenciaga thing, and even the brand itself had to admit it was creepy and is now doing an investigation into it. I don't care if you yourself don't want to talk about this stuff. I don't care. You do you, I will do me. But all I ask is that you stay out of my way when I am doing me. And just know that I am not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Goodbye.